Werner von Braun and the American Space Program Werner von Braun, a German and later American engineer and scientist, created the Saturn V rocket that propelled the Apollo mission to the moon. Originally working for the Nazi party during World War II, Werner von Braun was captured and taken to the United States, where he worked for the National Air and Space Administration. Werner von Braun's contributions to the field of spaceflight are considered the most important by many, and Werner von Braun remains one of the greatest rocket scientists in history. Werner von Braun was born in the Posen province of the German Empire on March 23, 1912, to Magnus von Braun and Emmy von Kunstorp. Werner was the middle child of three, with an older brother named Sigismund and a younger brother named Magnus. Werner's family was a noble aristocratic family, with both parents tracing their heritage to European royalty, and Werner inherited the title of Baron. At an early age, Werner was interested in music, and even wanted to compose his own songs. He learned to play the piano and the cello, taught by Paul Hindemith. He also developed an interest in astronomy when his mother gave him a telescope after his admission to the Lutheran Church. Several years after Werner's family had moved to Berlin, Werner attempted to make a toy wagon run faster by attaching fireworks to it, something that did not quite work as he expected it to, and instead exploded. In addition to his fascination with astronomy, Werner von Braun read the books of Jules Verne and H.G. Wells, and gained an interest in space exploration. While attending a boarding school, Werner was given a copy of the book, the Rocket into Interplanetary Space by Hermann Oberth, a German rocket pioneer. He became fascinated with the concept and applied himself in school to further pursue his interest in rocketry and space. Werner was so set on the idea that he became top of his class in mathematics and physics. Inspired by Hermann Oberth, Werner learned trigonometry and calculus and joined the German Space Flight Club. Werner also got the opportunity to assist Hermann Oberth in his tests of liquid-fueled rockets in his spare time. He later joined the German army to develop ballistic missiles, although his primary interest remained space exploration. While working for the German army, Werner graduated from the Berlin Institute of Technology with a bachelor's in mechanical engineering and obtained his PhD in physics from the University of Berlin in 1934. For a short time, Werner studied in Switzerland, but returned to the German army with the rise of the Nazi party. In 1937, Werner joined the Nazi party, due to the party taking over control of rocket science in Germany. By this time, Werner's rocketry group had tested several rockets that had flown to heights of over two miles, and Werner didn't want to lose his work. Werner had a neutral attitude towards the Nazis, but seeing as how it was politically useful to demonstrate his support of the party, he wore the SS uniform he received upon joining the Nazi rocket program. Before Werner had joined the Nazi rocket program, he had begun work on his aggregate series of rockets, heavily inspired by the work of American rocket pioneer Robert Goddard. Werner's rocket experiments were completely taken over by the Nazis, and construction and testing of the rockets was immediately oriented towards war. In particular, Adolf Hitler wanted Werner's team to create ballistic missiles capable of hitting Allied cities when fired from the ground, or missiles that could help jet takeoff. The German military constructed a facility in Peinemunde and assigned Werner to be the technical director. Werner set about reproducing the models he had created for the Space Flight Club and made modifications to the design stability and layout. The final version, dubbed the Vengeance Weapon 2, shortened to V2, used liquid oxygen and alcohol as fuel, and could travel at speeds higher than 3.5 thousand miles per hour. In September of 1944, the first of thousands of V2 rockets was launched towards England, and after hearing the news about the successful launch and delivery of a one-ton bomb, to London, Werner stated that he was happy that the rocket had flown, but unhappy as it had hit the wrong planet. 
Werner is also remembered in a negative light for implementing slave labor to create his rockets, although he attempted to put an end to it. Although the V-2 rockets were extremely successful, the German army could not withstand the attacks of the Soviet and American troops, and as Soviet troops began their march to Berlin, Werner decided to surrender himself to the Americans. He was taken to an American base in Nordhausen, Germany, and briefly interrogated under an operation known as Operation Paperclip. On June 20th, the American Secretary of State approved the decision to take Werner to the United States, where he would be safe from the Soviet troops and could help advance science. Werner was taken to a facility near El Paso, Texas, along with approximately 100 members of his pain immunity group. At the facility, they instructed military personnel and engineers in the science of rocketry and helped disassemble, anatomize, reconstruct, and even launch several models of the V-2 that had been brought over from Germany. In 1950, Werner and his team were transferred to Huntsville, Alabama, where they helped design rockets for the Korean War. Werner's work resulted in the Redstone rocket, later used by the United States in the first nuclear ballistic missile tests. The Redstone rocket was modified to create the Jupiter C and Pershing rockets. Despite the many successes, Werner wanted to focus more on the use of rockets to explore outer space, much like the Soviet Union was doing with the Sputnik program. Pushing for his idea of spaceflight, Werner published an article on mankind's exploration of space in a magazine in 1952. The article described the space station that Werner imagined in great detail, as well as the rocket that would bring the station up. According to Werner's plans, when the astronauts landed on the moon, they could establish a temporary base out of parts of the rockets used to take them there. Werner also created plans to explore the surface of Mars and establish colonies there. In an attempt to popularize the idea of mankind populating Mars, Werner wrote a novel on the subject, but the novel was rejected by publishers. Turning to a more popular form of media, Werner collaborated with Walt Disney to create a series of films about space travel. The first of those films was viewed by 42 million people when it went live. Several years later, Werner also published a much more popular booklet on space travel. While the United States government was not yet concerned with getting humans into space, Werner published papers on how space stations could be adapted to be able to fire missiles, giving the United States an edge in warfare. However, Werner's skill would soon be implemented for much more peaceful purposes. The United States had seen the Soviet Union launch the Sputnik satellite and had tasked the Navy with building a rocket to rival the Soviets. When the Navy's rocket failed, Werner was called upon to help. Werner's work began with the launch of another satellite, one that the U.S. hoped could surpass the Soviet Sputnik 1 and the newly launched Sputnik 2. Werner would design and modify the rocket that could deliver the craft, while the satellite itself was developed at the California Institute of Technology. Werner von Braun decided to modify his already existing Jupiter rocket to be able to lift the satellite, and working closely together with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the Institute, created a new rocket known as the Juno-1. The Explorer satellite was completed a short time later and contained equipment that would be used to measure temperature, detect cosmic rays, and the impacts of cosmic debris. The Juno successfully launched with the Explorer on January 31, 1958. Werner and his team of engineers were transferred to NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, created just two years earlier. The team was tasked with creating a super booster that would propel a manned rocket into space. Werner agreed and became the first director of the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Work immediately began on a rocket that would be capable of getting humans into space, possibly ahead of the Soviet Union. The rocket that would bring man to space would be a modified version of the Redstone rocket developed earlier by Von Braun. The Army Ballistic Missile Agency decided that the best design would be a modification of the Redstone rocket past the Juno rocket, 
and handed the job over to Werner. ABMA Designs suggested that the rocket's first stage should be modified to have eight engines instead of four, and that the diameter of the rocket would be changed to accommodate hydrogen and oxygen fuel for the upper stages. This would decrease costs and make the design easier and faster to construct. After making the requested upgrades, the Saturn rocket was created and successfully launched on October 27, 1961. Werner continued work on the rocket and created the Saturn 1B rocket, which burnt only part of its fuel to exit Earth orbit, meaning it could be used for lunar missions. This rocket was also successfully launched after several tests. The final modification to the Saturn series of rockets was the Saturn V, the rocket that would bring Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins to the moon. Werner von Braun resigned from NASA in 1972, and for a short time worked for Fairchild Industries in Maryland. He was diagnosed with kidney cancer in 1973 and died in 1977. For his work, Werner von Braun received the National Medal of Science in 1975. Werner also created the National Space Institute, which later turned into the National Space Society. Werner von Braun paved the way for modern spaceflight and has widely been regarded as one of the founding fathers of rocketry and space exploration. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, if you enjoyed, leave a like or a favorite, share the video with your friends, or even subscribe for more educational content. Check out some of the other videos on this channel, or check out the featured channels for more content.